This is the fourthly part of the novel. For other parts, please refer to the description of this video or the video list on the channel. On the following day, the surgical procedure performed on Mrs. Xiao by eminent medical professors from the Jiangnan province was remarkably successful. Two distinguished caregivers were specially assigned by the hospital for her post-operative care. Lin Dong entrusted the management of the Benchi Corporation to Xiao Pujuan, who commenced his duties while discreetly safeguarding Lin Dong. Zhao Yang and his family divided their responsibilities into two groups, Zhao Taizhu and Li Chunhua stationed themselves at the entrance of the hotel, while Zhao Yang guarded the entrance of the Jiangnan International Mansion. It seems they were reluctant to depart in such a crestfallen manner. Deprived of Zhao Xian's financial backing, they found themselves adrift in uncertainty about the future. Nonetheless, Lin Dong paid them no heed, observing how long they could endure. This episode was bound to impart a profound lesson upon them good tidings also reached Zhao Xian. Under the lure of substantial monetary inducement, negotiations were underway regarding potential interest in Donglai International. As a venture investment firm, Donglai International's primary requirement was to assemble a formidable legal team, negotiation experts, and assessment specialists. Lin Dong urged Zhao Xian to act promptly, assuring her that no expense should be spared. He anticipated that the newly recruited individuals would prove their mettle. As dusk approached, within the resplendent confines of the Jiangcheng Golden Sands Entertainment City, Zhang Min accompanied Lu Ping to attend a class reunion gathering. The gathering was organized by those who remained at the school during the vacation period, with some early returnees also in attendance. However, Sun Si was absent due to a family emergency, likely necessitating her absence for several days. Zhang Min's decision to bring Lu Peng along was partly motivated by his status as a scion of wealth and his commendable appearance, embodying the quintessential tall, rich, and handsome archetype Zhang Min harbored a subtle inclination towards flaunting her affiliation with him. Upon entering an expansive private room, approximately 30 young individuals were already present, comprising both men and women. Given their enrollment in the performance department of the Communication University, it was unsurprising that they possessed considerable aesthetic appeal, as such attributes were deemed requisite for aspirants in the realm of performing arts. Zhang Min and Lu Peng's arrival inevitably drew attention, considering Zhang Min's status as one of the more outstanding students in the class. Who is this gentleman accompanying Zhang Min? Could we have an introduction? inquired one of their classmates. Seizing the opportunity, Zhang Min promptly introduced, This is my boyfriend, Lu Peng, currently enrolled at Jiangnan University, and hails from a family engaged in modest entrepreneurial endeavors, boasting assets of several tens of millions. Wow, Zhang Min, you've managed to secure such a dashing and affluent partner. I envy you greatly, remarked another, amid a chorus of admiring voices Zhang Min was elated to bask in the envy and admiration of her peers. Hello, everyone. I'm Lu Peng, Min Min's boyfriend. I appreciate the kindness you've shown her, and I raise a toast to all of you, declared Lu Peng as he raised a glass of beer in acknowledgement. Lu Peng's gesture elicited praise from the female attendees. However, his display left some of the male attendees feeling unsettled, realizing that one of the class's most prized blossoms had been plucked by someone from outside their institution, a bitter pill to swallow indeed. Following these brief introductions, the festivities resumed with singing and dancing what is the experience like accompanying students from the communication university to a karaoke establishment? Lu Peng was beginning to comprehend it firsthand. It was akin to attending a miniature soiree, where each individual exuded an intense desire to perform. With no opportunity to showcase his talents amidst these professionals, Lu Peng resigned himself to the role of a spectator, relegated to the sidelines. Fortunately, Zhang Min remained by his side throughout the evening. After some time, Zhang Min abruptly rose from her seat and hurriedly pulled Lu Peng aside. Da Peng, we must leave immediately, she exclaimed anxiously. What's wrong, Min Min? Lu Peng inquired, sensing her unease. Without offering an explanation, Zhang Min urged, let's go outside and discuss. All right. As they prepared to exit the private room, the door was forcefully pushed open, and a group of men clad in black surged in with a resounding click, the lights in the room were switched on, prompting everyone to halt their activities and direct their attention towards the uninvited guests. Who the hell dared to lay a hand on me just now, demanded a bald-headed man in his thirties, adorned with numerous peculiar tattoos across his bare torso. Silence engulfed the room, as everyone present was taken aback. After all, they were merely students, ill-equipped to contend with such formidable adversaries. The bald-headed man swiftly noticed Zhang Min and Lu Peng, 
who were preparing to leave. Advancing towards them, he seized Zhang Min by her long hair and yanked her forcefully into his embrace, causing her to emit a shrill cry of agony. Was it you who dared to strike me earlier? Damn it, this is the first time in my life I've been slapped. What do you intend to do about it? He menacingly whispered into Zhang Min's ear observing the bald-headed man's actions, Lu Peng was momentarily stunned, but swiftly regained his composure, retorting, What are you doing? Release Min Min immediately, or I'll call the police. With these words, Lu Peng reached for his phone, intending to make a call. However, before he could dial, a swift kick from one of the black-clad individuals sent him crashing back onto the sofa, clutching his abdomen in pain, as his phone flew into the midst of the startled students. Several timid female attendees let out piercing screams, while others remained frozen in shock, unable to comprehend the unfolding chaos. The bald-headed man, gripping Zhang Min's hair, surveyed the others in the room and inquired, Are you all together? This little girl just slapped me. What do you suggest we do? It was you who touched me first. Zhang Min cried I touched you because I thought highly of you. Ask around, how many girls wish to be touched by yours truly? I'm not even interested, retorted the bald-headed man, his words dripping with disdain. Silence pervaded the room, with not a single person daring to speak. However, at this moment, a female classmate lurking behind the crowd stealthily retrieved Lu Peng's phone. She then composed a brief message, danger encountered in room 47, Jiangcheng Golden Sands, and casually sent it to a chosen recipient. Afterward, she discreetly returned the phone to its original position. Lu Peng began to regain some composure at this point. Addressing the bald-headed man, he said, Brother, on behalf of Min Min, I apologize. How much money do you need to let her go? Name your price. He had now grasped the situation at hand. Despite their numerical advantage, most of their group consisted of females. Should a physical altercation arise, they would likely end up on the receiving end of blows moreover, besides himself, there was no certainty that anyone else would dare to act, judging by their visibly frightened expressions. Are you this girl's boyfriend? The bald-headed man inquired. Yes, Lu Ping affirmed. All right. You seem like a reasonable guy. Just cough up a cool million, and I'll release you both. Otherwise, considering what a fine specimen this girl is, I wouldn't mind having a little fun with her. Ha, the bald-headed man declared, bursting into laughter. Da Peng. Help me. Zhang Min cried tearfully. She was immobilized by the bald-headed man's grip on her hair, unable to move, while he continued to take advantage of her helplessness. Brother, a million is too much. We're just students, we can't possibly come up with that kind of money. If you let Min Min go, I'm willing to compensate you with a hundred thousand, Lu Peng pleaded. A hundred thousand? Are you kidding me? Are you trying to play me for a fool? The bald-headed man squinted at Lu Peng, I only have this much money. I hope you can be magnanimous, sir, and spare us, Lu Peng implored. In truth, Lu Peng only possessed a hundred thousand. Despite being a scion of wealth, his parents' business wasn't particularly lucrative, and his extravagant lifestyle left him with minimal savings. This hundred thousand represented his living expenses for the coming month. However, he had no choice but to first secure Min Min's release and worry about the consequences later. Fine. A hundred thousand it is. Transfer the money now, the bald-headed man demanded. He hadn't anticipated that today's students would be so wealthy. The figure of one million was merely a casual remark, he had hoped to extort perhaps eight or nine hundred thousand at most. To receive a direct payment of a hundred thousand caught him completely off guard. This sum would afford him a comfortable lifestyle for quite some time upon hearing the bald-headed man's agreement, Lu Peng felt a wave of relief. After all, it was only a hundred thousand, if worse came to worst, he could always come up with an excuse to ask his parents for more money later. However, just as Lu Peng was about to retrieve his phone to make the transfer, he heard Zhang Min scream. Ah! You scoundrel! Stop it! Lu Peng quickly looked over, and what he saw ignited a surge of rage within him. Acting on impulse, he grabbed a nearby bottle and charged towards the bald-headed man, smashing it over his head. Unbeknownst to Lu Peng, at that very moment when he was about to retrieve his phone, the bald-headed man, with one hand gripping Zhang Min's hair, had already reached inside her clothing and began groping her. The bald-headed man was now covered in blood, his head having borne the brunt of the bottle's impact with both hands released from Zhang Min's grasp, he clutched his head and howled in pain. 
Several black-clad individuals quickly reacted, rushing forward to restrain Lu Pang and pin him to the ground. The students from the communication university were petrified, never having witnessed such a scene before. Zhang Nin, too, was frightened. She hadn't expected Lu Peng to dare to come to her rescue. At the same time, she felt a touch of gratitude. Watching as Lu Peng was overwhelmed by the black-clad men, unable to move, she contemplated rushing to his aid. However, before she could make a move, the now intimidating bald-headed man grabbed her once more. With his blood-stained visage, the bald-headed man appeared truly fearsome. As he held on to Zhang Min, he continued his unwelcome advances. Zhang Min struggled desperately, but all she received in return were several harsh slaps, leaving her dazed and unable to resist, allowing the bald-headed man to have his way with her soon enough, the bald-headed man forcibly tore off Zhang Min's outer garment, revealing her innerwear beneath. Stop! Stop! I'll give you the money! A million! Please! Lu Peng's heart was torn asunder as he watched, straining against his captors in a futile attempt to rise. However, he was held down firmly by the black-clad men, unable to move, forced to witness the bald-headed man's assault on Zhang Min. Ignoring Lu Peng, the bald-headed man continued to molest Zhang Min, heedless of her cries for mercy. Moments earlier in the restroom, upon seeing Zhang Min, he had been unable to resist groping her a couple of times, a behavior he had engaged in numerous times before without repercussions, given his reputation. However, he hadn't expected to receive a slap from Zhang Min today, prompting him to follow her here with his entourage surveying the now-compliant beauty before him, the bald-headed man proceeded to plant a forceful kiss on Zhang Min's lips. Lin Dong reclined halfway on the sofa, idly playing with his mobile phone. Suddenly, a message arrived. Upon closer inspection, it was from Lu Pang. Opening the message, the contents read, The Grand Suite 47 at Golden Sands encounters peril. Lin Dong promptly stood up. Lu Peng wouldn't send such a message without reason. He contemplated making a call, but realized if Lu Peng had messaged, he must be currently indisposed. Thus, he dialed Xiao Pujuan, instructing him to come immediately. Hurriedly, Lin Dong descended the stairs, driving towards the Golden Sands. En route, he rendezvoused with Xiao Pujuan, and together they hastened forth. Soon, they arrived at the Golden Sands, escorted by a waiter to Suite 47. Pushing the door open, Lin Dong beheld a man, bloodied, making advances towards a woman. Meanwhile, Lu Peng was pinned down by several men in black, one forcefully gripping his hair. With crimson rage in his eyes, Lu Peng glared ferociously at the man. In the corner of the suite, numerous young men and women huddled. Lin Dong's entrance startled everyone within. The aggressor ceased his advances upon Zhang Min, glaring at Lin Dong, and uttered, Who the devil are you? Do you know where you are? How dare you barge in? It was then that Lin Dong realized, to his astonishment, that the woman being harassed was Lu Peng's girlfriend, Zhang Min. This despicable act upon Lu Peng's girlfriend, with Lu Peng forced to witness, was nothing short of psychological torment. Lin Dong chose not to respond to the aggressor's words but instead uttered, Pujuan, I leave this to you. Yes, master, replied Xiao Pujuan. With swift steps, he advanced. Damn you! Get him! The aggressor shouted, grabbing a nearby wine bottle and charging forth bang. The moment the aggressor came into contact with Xiao Pujuan, before he could swing the bottle, his body was sent flying several meters backward, writhing in agony upon the ground. In less than half a minute, all the men in black and the aggressor lay writhing on the floor, emitting cries akin to slaughtered pigs. With the assailants neutralized, Lu Peng hastily rose, removing his own clothes to cover Zhang Min. Approaching Lu Peng, Lin Dong patted his shoulder, asking, Are you alright, Big Peng? I'm fine, thank you, Dongzi. Good to hear you're okay. Lin Dong then walked over to the aggressor, placing a foot on his face. Squatting down, he spoke, You dare assault my brother and harass his girlfriend, Ruffian. How do you propose to resolve this matter? The aggressor, with Lin Dong's foot upon his face, mumbled unintelligibly, Kid, you're done for. Let me tell you, I'm under Lord Chen's protection if you touch me, there will be no place for you in Jiangcheng anymore. Oh? What grandiose claims? I'm eager to see who this Lord Chen truly is. Get up and call him, Lin Dong said, releasing the aggressor. The aggressor scrambled to his feet, casting a fearful glance at Xiao Pujuan behind Lin Dong, realizing his formidable strength. Quick, make the call. Lin Dong ordered. 
trembling, the aggressor dialed the number. He informed the person on the other end that there was trouble at the Golden Sands, he had been assaulted, and requested reinforcements, emphasizing the strength of the opposition. Lin Dong paid no heed to the aggressor's lies, he only needed reinforcements to arrive. Kid. Lord Six will be here soon. You're doomed. Emboldened by the imminent arrival of Lord Six, the aggressor's courage swelled. Who's doomed remains to be seen. Let's go, we'll wait in the lobby. Lin Dong said, leading the way downstairs to the lobby. Xiao Pujuan dragged the aggressor along Lin Dong sat in the middle of the lobby of the Golden Sands Entertainment City, his foot resting on the aggressor, while Xiao Pujuan stood behind him. Around them, more than ten security guards lay defeated. The manager of the Golden Sands stood amidst the crowd, gazing in shock at Xiao Pujuan behind Lin Dong, truly formidable, as the security guards fell like dominoes, unable to rise. Many onlookers surrounded the lobby, including the students from the Media University, along with Lu Pang and Zhang Min. All eyes were fixed curiously on Lin Dong. Lin Dong adorned the ring exclusive to SCC's advanced members on his hand. He had just rallied all SCC members in Jiangcheng to the Golden Sands in his capacity as an advanced member, a privilege reserved solely for them. Except for fellow advanced members who could refuse, intermediate and low-level members had no such right. The gathering of all SCC members in Jiangcheng wielded tremendous power, unprecedented and untested whether Lord Six could withstand it remained to be seen. Chen Lu, whose real name was Chen Shang, had earned a considerable reputation in Jiangcheng over a decade ago with his formidable fists. Due to an extra finger on his left hand, he was dubbed Chen Six Fingers. Over time, Chen Lu's influence grew, and through iron-fisted means, he nearly completely consolidated Jiangcheng's underground forces. People began addressing him as Lord Six upon sighting him, and gradually, the name Chen Six Fingers faded into obscurity. Few dared to directly address him by his birth name anymore. Today, Chen Lu received a call from his underling, Hei Pai, informing him of a disturbance at the Golden Sands. Someone dared to cause trouble on his turf? And they had even assaulted Hei Pai. This person must be new to Jiang Cheng. Though Hei Pai wasn't his most trusted lieutenant, he commanded around a dozen men, indicating considerable strength Chen Lu, accompanied by over a hundred men, rushed to the Golden Sands. It had been a long time since he had personally intervened. Without action, he would surely grow rusty. Upon arriving at the entrance of the Golden Sands, Chen Lu took the lead, followed by his entourage. Entering the lobby of the Golden Sands, Chen Lu was taken aback. Sitting at the center of the lobby was a young man, with a middle-aged man standing behind him. At the young man's feet lay Hei Pai, the one who had called him. On the ground were over ten security guards, and around them, hundreds of Golden Sands patrons watched. It had been many years since Chen Lu had suffered such humiliation. This wasn't merely a slap in the face, it felt like someone defecating on his head. With so many witnesses, if he didn't handle this situation well today, how could he maintain his standing in Jiangcheng? Chen Lu took a few steps forward, approximately seven or eight meters from Lin Dong his entourage of over a hundred followed suit, standing behind him. Seeing so many people suddenly arrive, some of the onlookers began to quietly slip away, fearing for their safety. However, many remained, albeit edging towards the periphery of the lobby. With two individuals facing off against over a hundred, despite the impressive display of strength by Xiao Pujuan, few gave them a chance. At this moment, Lu Peng quietly said a few words to Zhang Min, then walked to the center of the lobby and stood behind Lin Dong. Zhang Min wanted to stop Lu Peng, but she remembered that Lin Dong had gotten into this predicament to save them. Thus, she withdrew her hand, nervously watching them. Since Lin Dong had incurred trouble for his sake, Lu Peng couldn't just stand by idly. Young man, don't act rashly some actions have consequences, Chen Lu said, addressing Lin Dong. Lord Six, save me. Hei Pai, pinned under Lin Dong's foot, shouted. Are you his master? Do you know your dog is biting people everywhere? Lin Dong didn't respond to Chen Lu's words but instead asked Hei Pai under his foot. Even if my dog bites someone, I'll handle it myself. If anyone else dares to intervene, I'll break their hands. Lord Six is indeed Lord Six, truly imposing. You don't even ask for the reason. But today, not only did I use my hands, I also used my feet. What can you do to me? The reason doesn't matter. What's important is that since you've harmed my men, don't think you can leave this lobby. See what I can do to you. 
Chen Lu charged directly at Lin Dong. He had earned his reputation with his iron fists, though it had been a while since he had fought. He still practiced diligently every day. Though not as formidable as his peak, he hadn't declined much. Today, he must subdue Lin Dong and his group with thunderous force, otherwise, he would lose all credibility in Jiangqing as Chen Lu moved, Xiao Pujuan behind Lin Dong also acted. He swiftly maneuvered to stand in front of Lin Dong, ready to confront Chen Lu's iron fists. Chen Lu was close to Lin Dong, intending to take him down directly. However, upon charging forward, he found a figure blocking Lin Dong, a figure that was none other than Xiao Pujuan. Impressive! Chen Lu was surprised. The distance between him and Lin Dong was only 7 or 8 meters, and it was a straight line. Moreover, his attack was unexpected, yet the opponent reacted so quickly. This was definitely a formidable opponent. Nevertheless, Chen Lu wasn't afraid. He had fought his way through numerous formidable opponents to become the top figure in Jiangqing's underground world. He threw a punch at Xiao Pujuan. Xiao Pujuan leaned to the side, assuming a defensive stance, silently chanting, Cannon fist. Then, he unleashed a punch bang. Their fists collided in midair and then separated. Xiao Pujuan took a small step back but stood firm, looking at Chen Lu with a hint of surprise in his eyes. Meanwhile, Chen Lu retreated six or seven steps before coming to a stop. Gazing at Xiao Pujuan, who had only taken a small step back, Chen Lu felt even more astonished. This guy is formidable. Chen Lu considered himself unrivaled in Jiangcheng, except for a few hidden experts from prominent families. He had some knowledge of the descendants of several prestigious families in Jiangcheng, having interacted with them before, but none of them resembled the person before him. This person was likely an outsider. However, since he had come to his territory, even if he were from a prestigious family, he had to yield to him. It wasn't as if he didn't have support behind him, otherwise, he wouldn't have reached such heights. Chen Liuji refrained from further advancement, as he realized he was no match for Xiao Pujuan after their recent collision you're formidable. But as they say, two fists are no match for four hands, especially when you have to protect your master. Let's see how you handle the upcoming challenges, Xiao Pujuan remarked. Just as Chen Liuji was preparing to outnumber and subdue Lin Dong, Xiao Pujuan swiftly dashed to his side, his iron clamp-like hand firmly gripping his neck before he could react. You! Chen Liuji managed to utter a single word before Xiao Pujuan silenced him, his neck restrained, his voice silenced, only able to stare at the figure before him with fearful eyes. The surrounding henchmen were eager to intervene, but Chen Liuji gestured to stop them, knowing that with a little exertion from the man before him, he would meet his downfall today. Lin Dong approached Chen Liuji, saying, Mr. 6. Your dog has bitten someone outside, yet you seek to punish the victim. I wonder what you rely onies at the hundred plus lackeys behind you, or your overestimated skills. At that moment, a tremendous roar of machinery echoed from outside the Grand Hall of the Magnificent Golden Sands, Jiangqing's largest entertainment city. As Jiangqing's foremost entertainment hub, the ground floor of the Golden Sands boasted immense proportions. The thunderous noise of machinery reverberated throughout the hall, followed by a procession of customized Aston Martins, one after another, twelve in total, each worth millions. The arrival of the 12 limited edition cars drew astonished gazes from onlookers. Normally, such vehicles were a rare sight, yet today, 12 arrived in unison, sparking marvel among the crowd. Leading the procession was Lu Chen, scion of the prominent Jiang family and the spearhead of Jiangqing's SCC, a senior member himself. Although his status didn't necessitate his presence, Lu Chen had received a notice from headquarters about another senior SCC member emerging in Jiangqing given his position as the leader of Jiangqing's SCC, it was natural for him to extend his regards. Moreover, Lin Dong had issued a summon for senior members, prompting his arrival. Twelve cars, twelve individuals, ten men and two women, mostly in their twenties and thirties. These few individuals represented the influence of a significant portion of Jiangqing. To ordinary folk, Chen Liuji, the purported top figure of Jiangqing's underworld, was a colossal figure. Little did they know, he was merely a pawn deployed to garner attention. The true power players operated discreetly behind the scenes. Lu Chen and his cohort embodied this subtlety. Lu Chen led the group toward Lin Dong. The tension was palpable, as if anticipating an impending clash. Brother Lin, could you grant me a favor? Lu Chen addressed Lin Dong respectfully, defying the expected confrontation Lin Dong glanced at Lu Chen, 
recognizing him as Jiang Qing's only senior SCC member and its leader. He was also the one who arranged for surgery at the first hospital for Pa Juan's mother. Pa Juan. Lin Dong called out. Upon hearing this, Xiao Pa Juan released his grip on Chen Liuji. Once freed, Chen Liuji breathed heavily for a moment before addressing Lu Chen with reverence, Young Master Lu. A resounding slap echoed through the silent hall, catching everyone off guard. You haven't apologized to Brother Lin yet. Lu Chen admonished Chen Liuji with another slap. Chen Liuji, struck twice by Lu Chen, suddenly realized Lu Chen's true identity. Lu Chen, scion of Jiangqing's foremost family, held significant sway behind the scenes. Chen Liuji's position as Jiangqing's top underworld figure owed much to Lu Chen's support. In a sense, he was nothing but a pawn used by the Jiang family to attract attention those who could command Lu Chen's respect were at least on par with him. It seemed today he had offended someone truly formidable. Quickly, he turned to Lin Dong with deference, Young Master Lin, I apologize. It was an oversight on my part to offend you. Please, overlook my indiscretion. A true man can bend as well as stand tall. Chen Liuji's ability to apologize humbly before a young man in his twenties, amidst a crowd, spoke volumes about his character. Moreover, this man was the ostensible leader of Jiangqing's underworld. Lin Dong ignored Chen Liuji's apology and turned to Lu Chen, saying, Since Brother Lu has spoken, let's consider this matter resolved for today. Brother Lin is magnanimous. Thank you, Brother Lin, Lu Chen replied graciously. Thank you, young Master Lin. Thank you, young Master Lin. Chen Liuji hurriedly expressed his gratitude. Let's go, Brother Lin, let's find a place to have a drink, Lu Chen invited, and they ascended to the upper floors of the Golden Sands, followed by the SCC members before leaving, Lin Dong patted Lu Peng's shoulder, instructing him to return first. The manager of the Golden Sands hurriedly led the way. The group departed, leaving behind hundreds of bold onlookers and over a hundred of Chen Liuji's lackeys in disarray, still in disbelief. Is that it? Where's the anticipated clash? Chen Liuji, the so-called top figure of Jiangqing's underworld, received two slaps and had to apologize? Many watched Chen Liuji standing there, stunned. It seems like you're saying, aren't you the big boss of Jiangqing's underworld? Why act so cowardly? Apologizing after being hit. Except for a few who knew the inside story, others found it quite surprising, even subverting their expectations. At this moment, Black Skin lay on the ground, feigning unconsciousness, fearing that Chen Liuji might tear him apart if he got up if it weren't for him, Chen Liuji wouldn't have lost so much face today. The incident would likely have spread throughout Jiangcheng soon. Chen Liuji, the purported top figure of Jiangcheng's underworld, would become the butt of jokes over tea and dinner for many. Of course, such remarks would only be made in private. Zhang Min and others from the same class watched Lin Dong's departure with disbelief. They wanted to ask Lu Peng about Lin Dong's identity but didn't know how to broach the subject. In fact, Lu Peng was also perplexed. He and Lin Dong had been roommates since their freshman year, and they were the closest among the four roommates. Never did he imagine that Lin Dong would conceal such a terrifying identity. It seemed he needed to find an opportunity to ask. Meanwhile, among the crowd, Zhang Yun and Chen Lan exchanged glances, sensing regret in each other's eyes if only they had built better relations with Lin Dong when Zhang Min invited them to socialize with Lu Peng's dormitory, they could have wielded considerable influence in Jiangqing by now. Such a prominent figure, which seemed only to exist in dreams, was once looked down upon by them. Sometimes in life, missed opportunities never come again. Inside a top-tier private room at the Golden Sands, two young men were engaged in conversation. Wiley, you've worked hard these past few years. Mr. Sheen is too kind. It's an honor for me to assist Mr. Sheen. When you return to the capital, I'll arrange a reception for you. Thank you, Mr. Sheen. Wiley, as he was called, was thrilled. Having Mr. Sheen personally host his reception was a great honor. By the way, how's Mingyue been recently? Mr. Sheen, Miss Mingyue has been doing well lately. Knock, knock. As the two conversed, a knocking came from outside the door come in. A middle-aged man in his forties entered the room. Young master, there are over a dozen SCC members gathered downstairs. Oh? Do you know what it's about? I heard a senior member issued a summons. Lu Chen? 
No. Another senior member emerged in Jiangcheng. Ignore them. SEC is just a motley crew. Apart from a few core members and some senior figures, the rest are inconsequential. Yes, young master. The middle-aged man left the room. Huili, investigate this newly promoted senior SEC member in Jiangcheng. Yes, Mr. Qin. Lin Dong and Lu Chen's group, led by the manager of the Golden Sands, arrived at the top-level luxury private room. As Jiangcheng's largest entertainment city, it offered both entertainment spaces and quieter areas for business discussions. Come, Lin brother, let me introduce you. These are all members of our Jiangcheng SCC. This is my younger sister, Lu Xiaoxiao, this is who you, this is. Lu Chen introduced Jiangcheng SCC members to Lin Dong one by one. With Lin Dong's exceptional mental prowess, he memorized them all in one go. The twelve present weren't the entirety of Jiang Cheng SCC's members, three couldn't make it as they were out of town. Lin Dong scanned the room. Lu Xiaoxiao was dressed like a young lady in her late teens or early twenties. Who you seem to be around his age but heavily made up. Are these scions of big families not attending school? Or does their dressing overshadow any school's regulations? Little did he know, even the schools were under their control. Who dared to intervene? Now, what is Lin brother doing in Jiangcheng? I don't recall seeing Lin brother before. Lu Chen inquired. Upon hearing Lu Chen's question, everyone present perked up their ears to hear Lin Dong's response. After all, becoming a senior member wasn't an easy feat. As for directly spending a hundred billion to become a senior member, no one would think of it that way there was no such precedent since SCC's inception. Even spending 10 billion to become an intermediate member was rare, with only two or three cases. There weren't many present who could produce a hundred billion in cash. What couldn't you do with a hundred billion? Investing in projects or buying land and buildings sounded appealing. What was the use of becoming a senior member apart from showing off? Unless one had so much money that they couldn't spend it all, no one would do it. If Lin Dong suddenly appeared in Jiangcheng, with his status as a senior member, his backing must be substantial. In that case, Jiangcheng's various forces would have to take him seriously, even Lu Chen. Before Lin Dong appeared, he was the only senior member of Jiangcheng SCC, and he was practically a dominant figure in Jiangcheng, being the eldest son of the prominent Lu family. If Lin Dong did indeed arrive in Jiangcheng with the intention to expand his influence, without knowing Lin Dong's background, he would have to pay attention not a single SCC member who could become a senior member was an ordinary person. And the unknown was the most frightening. Lu brother, I'm currently studying in Jiangcheng. However, I have an investment company. If any of you need funding, you can come to me. I only invest and hold shares, without participating in management. Lin Dong replied. Only invest and hold shares without participating in management or decision making? Now, everyone present became interested. Isn't this like free money? Is there really such a good deal? I wonder what kind of projects Lin brother is interested in. Perhaps we could collaborate. Also became interested. Any project is fine. I am not picky. Then let's find a good time to chat properly. Lin Dong suddenly received several friend requests. Since they came to offer money, naturally they wouldn't refuse no one would doubt Lin Dong's capability, becoming a senior member of SCC isn't something one can achieve easily. However, these people had a doubt. Could it be that Lin Dong intentionally played the role of a spendthrift to gain their favor and then achieve his own goals later? If so, whether to cooperate or not needed to be carefully considered. In truth, Lin Dong just wanted to spend the money quickly, gain more prestige, and see if the system had any new features. At this moment, Lin Dong said, rest assured, everyone, I, Lin Dong, absolutely have no intention of entering Jiangcheng, nor do I want to share the cake of Jiangcheng with you all. I simply want to purely give some money to you all. If you're worried, it can be clearly stated in the contract that regardless of how much stake we hold, we will not participate in management. Lin brother, you're joking. Lu Chen said somewhat awkwardly. He indeed had such thoughts. Lin Dong smiled without replying ever since his mental power reached its limit, not only did his senses enhance, but even his intelligence improved. Naturally, he could feel the wariness of these people. So he straightforwardly made his intentions clear to dispel their concerns. 
He didn't believe that by giving money to these people, they would refuse. Since Lin brother said so, we won't be overly courteous. Jiang Chang has been stable for many years, and we don't want any disturbances. We hope Lin brother can understand. Understood. I'll stick to my word. Just investment, no involvement in management. And I won't venture into Jiang Chang. You all can rest assured. If you need funds, you can find me anytime. Good. Since Lin Dong is so generous, on behalf of all members of SCC in Jiangcheng, we welcome your arrival. Hope we have more opportunities for cooperation in the future. Naturally, everyone was pleased. Many people with projects but lacking funds began to introduce themselves to Lin Dong. Just as Lin Dong said, since it was about giving money to them, naturally no one would refuse and Lin Dong just wanted to exchange money for prestige. While everyone was chatting happily, Xiao Pujuan knocked on the door and whispered a few words to Lin Dong. Lin Dong frowned upon hearing it. Facing Lu Chen, he said, Lu brother, Pujuan said there are experts coming in and out of the adjacent room. Experts? What kind of experts? Lu Chen asked. Pujuan isn't confident about dealing with them. At least, they won't be weaker than him. Lin Dong replied. Oh. Lu Chen was stunned, looking at Xiao Pujuan behind Lin Dong. At first sight of this person, he could feel a strong oppressive force emanating from him. And being able to easily defeat Chen Liuji, his strength should not be inferior to the two uncles of the family. So, he immediately thought that Lin Dong might be the vanguard sent by a big family to open up the situation in Jiangcheng. But now that Lin Dong had made his intentions clear, he shouldn't really intend to enter Jiangcheng and now another expert appeared? When did experts of this level become so rampant in Zhang Cheng? Lu Chen still felt that he should go and take a look. Experts of this level hiding in Zhang Cheng would have a significant deterrent effect. He must clarify the origin of the other party. After all, Zhang Cheng was the territory of the Lu family. Let's go. Lin brother, let's go and get acquainted. Lu Chen stood up first and walked out, giving a signal to Lu Xiaoxiao before leaving. The group arrived at the door of the adjacent private room, blocked by a middle-aged man. Xiao Pujuan stood directly in front, confronting the middle-aged man. The aura of both men radiated, making all SCC members feel suffocated. Of course, Lu Chen and Lin Dong were exceptions. Lu Chen directly shouted at the door, Whoever the gentleman is, gracing Jiang Cheng, please let me, Lu, extend the courtesy of a landlord. Soon, a voice came from inside Uncle Shan, let them in. The man named Uncle Sean pushed the door open, and Lu Chen's group followed suit. Inside the private room were two young men sitting. Lin Dong took a glance. He found one of them to be Zhou Huili, the president of the student union of Jiangnan University, and also the number one heartthrob of Jiangnan University. The other person Lin Dong didn't recognize, but he seemed to be a few years older than Zhou Huili. Uncle Sean stood behind this person. What is your name, sir, and what brings you to Jiangcheng? Lu Chen asked. Who I am, where I'm going, do I need to report to young master Lu? The man didn't answer Lu Chen's question but instead asked back. Young master Lu is indeed imposing. But listen carefully. The young man stood up and said word by word to Lu Chen, Qin family of Kyoto. Qin Zhang. Qin family of Kyoto? Qin Zhang? Lu Chen's pupils constricted, asking in a shocked voice, the eight great kings of Kyoto's tea party, Qin Zheng? When Lu Chen and the other SCC members heard of the eight great kings of Kyoto's tea party in Qin Zheng, they all looked at the young man opposite Lu Chen in shock the tea party of Kyoto and the SCC of Shanghai had been old rivals. The establishment of SCC in Shanghai was originally to resist the expansion of the tea party of Kyoto. The two forces were like water and fire. One was an old power with deep roots, occupying the north. The other was an emerging power showing its sharpness, occupying the south. The eight great kings of Kyoto's tea party was even a legendary figure. Unexpectedly, he appeared before them. Oh? So young master Lu knows me. I thought our Kyoto tea party couldn't catch the attention of young master Lu anymore. Xin Zhang said. Xin Zhang, as one of the eight great kings of Kyoto's tea party, why did you come without notice? What is your purpose? Lu Chen asked after reacting he was indeed surprised. The eight great kings of Kyoto's tea party. 
That was equivalent to the core members of the SCC of Shanghai. However, he wasn't afraid, this place was not only the territory of SCC but also his Liu family's territory. Even if the other party was formidable in the north, here was the south, Jiangcheng, where even dragons had to yield to him. Young Master Liu, I, Xin Zhang, don't need to report to you wherever I want to go. You're not qualified. And, if I really had any ulterior motive, would I only bring one person? Xin Zheng didn't want a conflict with Lu Chen either. After all, this was the other party's territory, and he only brought one person. Therefore, he added an explanation afterward. Otherwise, with his status as one of the eight great kings of Kyoto's Tea Party, he wouldn't bother to explain so much to Lu Chen, who wasn't of high enough rank he came here because he had some business to attend to in Jiangbei province, and he happened to stop by to inquire about the situation of Shang Wan Mingyue with Zhou Huili. He didn't expect to be seen by the other party. If he hadn't encountered them, he might have already left. Shang Wan Mingyue was the third miss of the hidden family Shang Wan family. Both the Shang Wan family and the Qin family intended to have them together, forming a marriage alliance between the two families. Shang Wan Mingyue came to Jiangnan province for university, while Zhou Huili was sent by Qin Zheng to monitor Shang Wan Mingyue and to help him drive away suitors around her. She was Qin Zheng's woman, and he wouldn't allow anyone to peek. Xin Zhang, regardless of your purpose, I hope you can leave Jiangcheng as soon as possible. Otherwise, even if you are one of the eight great kings of Kyoto's tea party, today, my Lu family will still explore your bottom Lu Chen said. Xin Zhang laughed. It had been a long time since he had been threatened like this, and it was by a senior member of SCC, no less. If he left now, and this matter spread, how could he establish himself in the tea party? What face would he have to continue as one of the eight great kings of Kyoto's tea party? Originally, he wanted to give Lu Chen some face so both sides could step down, but unexpectedly, the other party didn't give him any face at all. Since that's the case, there's nothing more to say. Young Master Lu, I've already given you face. If you continue to pester, don't blame me for bullying you. What about the Lu family? It's just a small family confined to one city. I, Xin Zhang, don't even bother to look at it. Xin Zhang said. Fine. 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 My Lu family indeed can't compare to your Qin family, but today I still want to try and see how powerful you, the legendary eight great kings of Kyoto's tea party, really are. Lu Chen said three finests in a row, expressing his inner anger Qin Zhang actually didn't regard his Lu family highly. So what if he was one of the eight great kings of Kyoto's tea party? Today, he must give the other party a profound lesson, otherwise, others might think that the Lu family is an easy target. At this moment, Lu Xiaoxiao arrived with two elders of the Lu family. Brother! Lu Xiaoxiao shouted. Young Master Lu! The two elders also called out. Two uncles, please help the Lu family regain its reputation, so that some people won't look down on my Lu family, thinking that my Lu family is powerless. Yes, Young Master Lu! The two elders answered simultaneously. Uncle Sean, go and play with them. Xin Zhang said to the middle-aged man behind him. Yes, young master. After finishing his sentence, Uncle Sean walked in front of Qin Zhang. The two elders of the Lu family also stepped forward. The others all stepped aside, leaving them with enough space. Boom! The three of them simultaneously made their moves, fists and feet clashing, creating a faint sound of air bursting, demonstrating their formidable strength. Uncle Sean defended against the attacks of the two elders of the Lu family effortlessly. Bang! Bang! Two loud sounds of impact rang out as the fists clashed. Uncle Sean remained motionless. However, the two elders of the Lu family were pushed back several meters. The difference in strength was apparent. Lu Chen, watching from the side, was also extremely shocked. Both uncles attacking simultaneously, yet they were not opponents. Uncle Sean! Finish it quickly! Xin Zheng said from behind. Yes, young master. Uncle Sean responded. The two elders of the Lu family exchanged glances, seeing each other's astonishment. They nodded simultaneously, attacking Uncle Sean from both the left and right directions one punched upwards, while the other swept low. Having cooperated for many years, the combined attack of the two was definitely greater than the sum of its parts. Uncle Sean remained in place. When the two attacked him, 
he suddenly exerted force under his feet, blocking the sweeping leg while delivering a powerful punch with his right hand to the one aiming upwards. Boom! The person who clashed fists with Uncle Sean was directly sent flying, crashing into the wall of the private room, blood spurting from his mouth. This! The onlookers were horrified. Just a moment ago, they had only stepped back a few steps from the fist clash. How come they were sent flying now? Could it be that the other side was hiding their strength? The remaining person didn't expect that while the other side blocked his sweep, he could also injure the other attacker. When he wanted to retreat, it was already too late. After Uncle Sean sent one person flying, he turned around and kicked towards the other bang. Another loud noise, and the remaining person was also kicked to the corner of the wall. If he hadn't timely used his hands to block in front of his chest, this kick alone would have caused severe injuries. Now, both his hands were already fractured. Uncle Lu. Uncle Lee. Lu Chen and Lu Xiaoxiao rushed to the sides, helping the two up. Are you a tiger list master? Uncle Lu, who was helped up by Lu Chen, asked. Uncle Sean didn't answer. Instead, he directly returned to Qin Zheng's side. Tiger list master? Lin Dong was stunned. This was the first time he had heard this term. The SCC members present, except for Lin Dong, were all shaken when they heard it. This was a level that ordinary people couldn't touch. Perhaps some people had watched too many TV dramas and thought that lists like Tiger List or Dragon List were just made-up things, non-existent. But in reality, there was only one list in the global underground world anyone who could make it onto this list was among the world's top-level masters. And the Tiger List was one of those lists. How is this paragraph? How are you, young Master Lu? Your esteemed patriarch, Mr. Lu, must be over 70 years old this year. If one day he is no longer with us, can your illustrious Lu family still maintain its current splendor? Xin Zheng joked with a smile. Xin Zheng, how our Lu family fares is none of your concern. If I don't leave you with something today, you might mistakenly think that I, Lu Chen, am someone easily manipulated. Upon finishing his words, Lu Chen drew a firearm and aimed it at the other party. However, the firearm was pointed not at Qin Zhang, but at the mountain uncle behind him. He truly dared not harm Qin Zhang. The Qin family is a long-standing family in the capital, with deep roots that the Lu family cannot hope to compare to. If Qin Zhang were to be seriously injured or even killed here in Jiangcheng, the Lu family might vanish in an instant his intent in stopping Qin Zhang was merely to give him a lesson, not to harm him in any way. If he were to do nothing today, word would spread, and the high-level members of the Kyoto Tea Party would loiter outside his Lu Chen's residence. As a senior member of the Shanghai Criminal Consortium, SCC, if Lu Chen didn't dare to make a move, he would become the laughingstock of the entire SCC and lose the opportunity to ever ascend to a core member. Qin Sheng's words were indeed valid. His grandfather is already over 70 years old, his health gradually declining, and the Lu family still lacks anyone capable of supporting the entire family. He must become a core member of the SCC to reverse the decline of the family. Hence, he knowingly confronts Qin Zhang, even aware of his status as one of the eight titans of the Kyoto Tea Party, to show the core members of the SCC that he is not afraid to confront even the eight titans and is not a coward who dares not act whether he succeeds or fails, he must do so. As long as he leaves the mountain uncle behind Qin Zhang, he wins. Seeing Lu Chen pointing the gun at the mountain uncle behind him, Qin Zhang's expression instantly changed. The once smiling face now turns serious. Both the Kyoto Tea Party and the Shanghai Criminal Consortium have an understanding that firearms cannot be used in conflicts. Yet Lu Chen dared to aim a gun at them. Young Master Lu, do you realize the consequences of your actions? Lu Chen did not answer. Young Master Lu, don't. Lu Uncle, standing beside Lu Chen, also spoke up to stop him. He wanted to tell Lu Chen that the top experts on the Tiger List are no longer afraid of firearms like pistols. But it was too late. For the sake of the family, Lu Chen acted without hesitation and pulled the trigger bang. A gunshot silenced the entire private room. However, the mountain uncle, who should have been shot and fallen to the ground, was nowhere to be seen. Broken army! Lin Dong suddenly exclaimed. His mental power had reached its limit, his intuition keen. He saw the mountain uncle easily dodge Lu Chen's bullets, then quickly rush towards Lu Chen, and he saw the murderous intent in the other's eyes. He was going to kill Lu Chen. Xiao Pohan stood in front of Lin Dong, 
closest to Lu Chen. So when Lin Dong shouted broken army, he acted swiftly to save Lu Chen. Upon hearing Lin Dong's voice, Xiao Pohan also reacted quickly and instantly moved to Lu Chen's side, charging towards the mountain uncle. After dodging Lu Chen's bullets, the mountain uncle, without hesitation, carried a murderous intent in his eyes as he rushed towards Lu Chen. Daring to point a gun at the young master, you must die. Boom! Another loud noise reverberated throughout the entire private room, much louder than the previous gunshot the sound was due to the vibrations generated by the clash of the two. The intensity of the vibrations from their confrontation was amplified within this enclosed private room. Therefore, except for a few individuals with a solid foundation, the ordinary people present were all covering their ears in pain. After the two figures made contact, they quickly bounced apart. The mountain uncle retreated five or six steps before stopping, while Xiao Poan also retreated five or six steps, even knocking Lu Chen behind him to the ground. Brother! Lu Xiaoxiao hurriedly ran over to help Lu Chen up. As Lu Chen got up, a mouthful of blood spewed from his mouth. The confrontation between the two Tiger List experts had only resulted in Lu Chen being knocked back by Xiao Pohan's body, yet he was already internally injured. It shows how terrifying the strength of Tiger List experts is brother. Why are you spitting blood? Are you okay? Lu Xiaoxiao tearfully looked at Lu Chen and asked. Xiaoxiao, I'm fine. Lu Chen's complexion was pale now too. Grateful, he looked at Lin Dong, who had regained his composure. If it weren't for Lin Dong prompting Xiao Pohan to act, he would be a corpse by now. Calm now, he reflected on what had just happened. He had indeed been too impulsive. Mainly because Qin Zhang hit him where it hurt, causing him to act rashly and pull out his gun. Now, thinking about it, even if he had killed the mountain uncle with the gun, what then? He would still have violated the rules of both sides. And he didn't dare to kill Qin Zhang, but Qin Zhang dared to kill him, that's the difference in their statuses. Qin Zhang watched as the mountain uncle retreated several steps and that broken army also retreated a few steps, which surprised him. He took a closer look at Lin Dong, who seemed to have been following this person who could contend with the mountain uncle and who might you be. Qin Zhang looked at Lin Dong and asked. Senior member of SCC, Lin Dong. Lin Dong replied. You're the newly promoted senior member of the SCC in Jiancheng? That's me. Are you also going to stop me? If young master Qin leaves now, I won't stop you. What a joke. Lu Qin just violated the rules of the Tea Party and the SCC, daring to aim a gun at me. From childhood to adulthood, he is the first person to dare to do so. I must kill him. Qin Zheng was indeed angry. As the eldest young master of the Qin family in Kyoto and one of the eight titans of the Tea Party, he was actually pointed at by a senior member of the SCC. If Lu Chen doesn't die, where can he put his face? Then there's nothing more to say, Lu Chen, I've got you covered. Mountain Uncle, go all out. Qin Zheng commanded towards the Mountain Uncle. The Mountain Uncle didn't say anything after hearing that, he directly rushed towards Xiao Po and Xiao Po and wasn't afraid either. The two of them engaged in combat once again. Bang! 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 Their fists collided with flesh. The entire private room was filled with the tremendous sound of their fists and the explosive force generated by their strength in the air. Except for Lin Dong, even Lu Uncle and Li Uncle, two top-notch experts, couldn't clearly see the movements of the two. Let alone others, they could only see two figures entangled with each other. The strength of Tiger List experts was not something ordinary people like them could glimpse. Bang! The two of them each took a punch from the other and then bounced back. Upon closer inspection, one would find that both of them were injured, with traces of blood seeping from the corners of their mouths. Qin Zhang was truly shocked. Even in the Qin family, the mountain uncle's strength could hold its own, yet here in Jiangcheng, he unexpectedly encountered an opponent who was evenly matched both sides had been fighting for so long and still hadn't determined a winner. And the mountain uncle had even been injured. Lin Dong also stared closely at the two fighters, ready to intervene if Xiao Pohan was slightly overwhelmed. During their last sparring session, he had only used 50% of his strength to push Xiao Pohan back several steps, so he didn't know what kind of power he would unleash at full strength. Watching the intense battle between the two Tiger List experts, he was also eager to try his hand. The two Tiger List experts stood quietly about a dozen meters apart, seemingly brewing their final strike. 
Xiao Pohan and the mountain uncle stood more than ten meters apart. Both were astonished by each other's strength. But they could also see each other's determination. It wasn't easy to find an evenly matched opponent, especially one with such an aggressive attacking style. The mountain uncle grew up in the Shaolin Temple and received authentic Shaolin teachings. Later, he joined the military but, due to his solitary nature, offended some important figures. He was eventually saved by the patriarch of the Qin family and joined them. Now assigned to protect the young master of the Qin family, the Qin family naturally recognized the mountain uncle's strength. Xiao Pohan, on the other hand, had been wandering on the edge of life and death for years, surviving in the midst of continuous warfare abroad and returning alive. It wasn't just luck. Both of them were known for their aggressive fighting styles, never bothering to dodge. Therefore, both sides sustained some minor injuries, but for them, it was nothing. Now both of them were adjusting their states, preparing to unleash their ultimate moves. The scene in the private room fell into silence for a moment. Lin Dong had initially wanted to intervene, but upon seeing the look in Xiao Pohan's eyes, he suppressed that thought with his keen sixth sense, he could feel Xiao Pohan's excitement, his blood boiling. He longed for this battle, and even more so, for self-transcendence. The senior members of the Lu family, Lu uncle, and Li uncle, who were present, were all focused on the intense battle between the two tiger list experts. For them, this was a rare opportunity. Both were top-notch peak experts, just a step away from entering the tiger list. But that step was like a chasm, perhaps impossible to cross in this lifetime. If watching the battle between the two tiger list experts could give them some inspiration, perhaps there would be a chance to advance further. Meanwhile, Lu Chen, Lu Xiaoxiao, and the other SCC members were shocked as they watched Xiao Pohan standing quietly in the center of the arena. They never expected Xiao Pohan to possess such strength. In this light, Lin Dong's background seemed somewhat terrifying, and even their gaze towards Lin Dong changed slightly suddenly, the two who were standing quietly in the center moved at the same time. They saw two residual images rushing towards each other at extremely fast speeds, instantly converging in the middle. At the moment of convergence, the mountain uncle sank his chi into his dantian and forcefully pushed out his palm along with the momentum of his whole body, shouting inwardly, Great strength Vajra Pong. Xiao Pohan, on the other hand, clenched his right fist in front of his chest and gathered his whole body's strength in an instant, punching out, silently chanting inwardly, Tiger Cannon Fist. Bang! The fists and palms collided, and a tremendous sound reverberated like thunder in the ears of the onlookers, making them dizzy. Not only was there a loud noise, but the full force collision of the two also generated a huge shockwave, flipping over the tables and chairs where Qin Zhang and Zhou Huili were seated, making everyone feel like they were in a raging storm immediately, two muffled groans followed. Xiao Pohan and the mountain uncle were both directly pushed back by the backlash from each other's force. Lin Dong hurriedly stepped forward and placed his hand on Xiao Pohan's back, cushioning the force of his retreat. Meanwhile, Qin Zhang also caught the mountain uncle's flying body as it returned. After stabilizing their bodies, Xiao Pohan and the mountain uncle both spewed out a mouthful of blood simultaneously, and both of them felt somewhat weakened. How do you feel, Pohan? Lin Dong asked, supporting Xiao Pohan. I'm fine, young master, but I won't be able to protect you for a while. Xiao Pohan said. It's okay. Let's heal your injuries first. Lin Dong said. On the other side. Young master. The mountain uncle wanted to speak but was stopped by Qin Zhang, mountain uncle, you rest first leave it to me next. Qin Zhang handed the mountain uncle over to Zhou Huili for support and walked to the center of the private room. Lu Chen, do you think someone's helping you, you can escape today? As Qin Zhang's voice fell, his aura instantly emanated, and then he drew a soft sword from his waist, with a cold light flashing. Before Lu Chen could reply, Qin Zhang disappeared from his original position. Young master, be careful. Young master, be careful. Both Lu uncle and Li uncle shouted at the same time. The two of them stood in front of Lu Chen and Lu Xiaoxiao together. At this juncture, Qin Zheng's assault also reached its culmination. Originally, Qin Zheng possessed nearly top-tier prowess, yet with both Lu Xu and Li Xu recently gravely injured, their strength greatly diminished, a mere glance from Qin Zheng sent them flying with two sword strikes, causing blood blossoms to bloom upon their bodies after dispatching the two, Qin Zheng did not relent, advancing directly towards Lu Chen and Lu Xiaoxiao, his blade aimed at Lu Chen. Witnessing Qin Zhang's sword poised to strike Lu Chen, who had already resigned to resistance, Lu Xiaoxiao beside him unexpectedly pushed him away, offering herself beneath Qin Zhang's blade. No, Lu Chen shouted with wide eyes. 
Xiao Xiao actually pushed him aside and delivered herself to the mercy of Qin Zhang's sword. How could he accept such sacrifice? The tip of the sword halted mere centimeters from Lu Xiaoxiao's form. It was not due to Qin Zhang's conscience surfacing, preparing to spare the siblings. Instead, at the blade's point, two fingers appeared, naturally belonging to Lin Dong. Nearly two fingers managed to arrest the sword of this top-tier master, Qin Zhang? Qin Zhang widened his eyes in astonishment, as did everyone present, including Shan Shu Qin Young Master, cease this, Lin Dong said calmly. Before Qin Zhang could respond, Shan Shu behind him spoke. Young master, we should depart. Shan Shu. Qin Zhang attempted to interject. Go. Shan Shu reiterated firmly, his expression brooking no dissent from Qin Zhang. He had just sensed a chilling aura emanating from Lin Dong, even unsettling to himself. Qin Zhang had never witnessed Shan Shu employ such gravitas in their conversations, momentarily bewildering him. Qin Zhang was currently in a dilemma. Should he leave, thus tarnishing the honor of the Qin family's young master, one of the eight heavenly kings of the Tea Party? Or should he stay? He had never seen Shan Shu address him with such a tone. Shan Shu had been by his side for many years, surely he wouldn't harm him. What to do? Leave or stay? Qin Zhang glanced at the others in the room aside from Lin Dong's serene countenance, the others appeared shaken. This showdown between peak practitioners of the Tiger List was indeed thrilling, evoking both admiration and an intense yearning in him. Xin Zhang felt he couldn't leave just yet. Even if he couldn't kill Lu Chen today, he must impart upon him an unforgettable lesson. Retreating today would not only affect his reputation but also his state of mind. Having already attained the pinnacle of top-tier mastery, to enter the ranks of the Tiger List's elite required unwavering determination. Most importantly, he believed no one dared to kill him, not even to grievously injure him. As the young master of the Qin family in the capital, he possessed such confidence and assurance. No one in Jiangcheng could withstand the wrath of the Qin family. Not the Lu family, nor any other clan. Hadn't they noticed how when Lu Chen wielded his gun, they only dared to aim at Shan Shu and not at him? This was the advantage conferred by a powerful background, he could take lives, yet no one dared to take his having pondered the crucial point. Qin Zheng exerted force with his right hand, attempting to thrust the sword into Lu Xiaoxiao's body. However, even with all his might, the sword remained immovable. This? How could this be? Despite his efforts, he couldn't overcome the opposing force exerted by those two fingers. Shan Shu also discerned that Qin Zheng had no intention of leaving. Qin Zheng didn't want to leave, but he had no choice. He was only here to protect Qin Zheng. Now he could only hope that the reputation of the Qin family would serve as a deterrent, hoping the other party wouldn't resort to extreme measures. Please, spare the young master, Shan Shu hastily pleaded. Lin Dong paid no heed to Shan Shu, merely saying to Qin Zhang with indifference, Qin young master, it seems you're still not willing to give up. Immediately, the two fingers pinching the sword tip swiftly loosened with lightning speed, they overlapped, lightly tapping on the sword tip. Ding! A crisp sound reverberated throughout the room. It was the sound of rapid vibration, clear and piercing, assaulting the ears of those present like being pricked by countless needles. Qin Zhang's right hand, affected by the rapid vibration transmitted through the sword tip, tingled as if it didn't belong to him. He quickly released the sword hilt. In the instant he let go, the sword, unable to withstand such rapid vibration, shattered into countless fragments, scattering on the ground. Everyone watched the scene in shock, including the two practitioners of the Tiger List. Lin Dong stood calmly beside Lu Xiaoxiao, who had her eyes closed, her delicate face contorted in a frown. Xin Zhang stood two meters away, cradling his right hand with his left, his face twisted in agony, surrounded by a litter of broken sword fragments Xin Zhang gazed at the fragments covering the ground, feeling a profound shock. This was an ultra-alloy weapon crafted with cutting-edge technology, capable of cutting through iron like mud. Yet now, it had been shattered by the mere flick of someone's fingers. The strength of this individual was beyond imagination. Qin Zhang was genuinely beginning to feel afraid. How powerful was this person at such a young age, and how formidable was the family backing him? Shan Shu hurriedly, ignoring his own severe injuries, moved forward, separating himself from Zhou Huili's support, and swiftly stood in front of Qin Zhang. Zhou Huili stood in place, watching Lin Dong absentmindedly. The moment he laid eyes on Lin Dong, he felt a sense of familiarity, but couldn't recall where he had seen him before. 
It wasn't until the other introduced himself as Lin Dong that Joe Wiley remembered was this the same Lin Dong who, a few days ago, was rumored to have been abandoned by his girlfriend and collapsed unconscious, vomiting blood, in the small grove beside Jiang University's playground? He could still find some photos and information about Lin Dong on his phone. Though they looked similar, bore the same name, and were about the same age, their auras were vastly different. He suspected they were two different individuals, but such a coincidence was implausible. Same age, appearance, and name, it simply couldn't be. So, this person was his schoolmate Lin Dong, the one who was dumped by his girlfriend and ended up vomiting blood in anger. But now, standing here, exuding such indifference, he even disregarded Qin Zhang, the young master. It felt somewhat unbelievable. Qin young master, do you wish to continue? Lin Dong inquired. Qin Zhang refrained from further action. His sole objective was to save Lu Chen, after all, Lu Chen had aided him, and they belonged to the same organization he couldn't bear to see him killed. He also didn't want to incur Qin Zhang's enmity. Although he felt confident in his strength now, he still lacked sufficient foundation. Moreover, there was no deep-seated animosity between them. Qin Zhang wanted to kill Lu Chen, not him. If someone truly wanted to kill him, Lin Dong believed he wouldn't hesitate, regardless of their background. He'd eliminate them first, ask questions later. That was the change brought about by strength. Qin Zhang remained silent, glaring at Lin Dong through Shan Shu. He couldn't fathom how someone younger could possess such formidable strength. Perhaps. Qin Zheng considered a possibility. Only this could explain everything. With this realization, Qin Zhang felt at ease. Only their organization could nurture such talent. However, he needed to report this matter to the Tea Party as soon as possible. Those people were beginning to emerge, and some had already joined the SCC's faction this was not good news for the Tea Party. Shan Shu, Huili, let's go, Qin Zhang said, urging them to leave the private room. As they exited, apart from Lin Dong and Xiao Pujuan, everyone else breathed a sigh of relief. Legendary figures like the eight heavenly kings of the Tea Party placed considerable pressure on them. Subsequently, everyone's gaze towards Lin Dong changed, from disdain upon their first meeting to now tinged with awe. Challenging one of the eight heavenly kings of the Tea Party head-on, and emerging victorious, rescuing the young master from his grasp, such achievements would resonate throughout the entire city of Modu. Wherever they went, strong individuals were admired. Brother Lin, for today's life-saving grace, my sister and I will never forget. If you ever need anything in the future, just give a call, and Lu Chen won't hesitate, Lu Chen expressed. And me. I won't hesitate either. In the future, if there's anything in Jiangcheng, just mention my name, Lu Xiaoxiao, Lu Xiaoxiao chimed in, reverting back to her playful nature brother Lu, you're too kind. Xin Zhang and his companions sat in the car, with Zhou Huili driving in the front and Xin Zhang and Shan Xu seated in the back. Normally, it was Shan Xu who drove, but now, with Shan Xu severely injured, Zhou Huili had to take the wheel. Zhou Huili needed to transport them back to Jiangbei province. Inside the car, Shan Xu. At what level do you think Lin Dong has reached? Xin Zheng inquired. He was eager to know the current strength of Lin Dong, who was younger than him. Young master, I can't be sure. He only revealed a trace of his aura, yet it felt chilling to me. And I couldn't replicate his feat of shattering the sword with a flick of his fingers. I speculate he's at least at the peak of the tiger list, if not higher. Shan Xu answered after some thought. Above the tiger list? How is that possible? Xin Zhang asked in disbelief young master, you must understand that there are always people beyond our comprehension. Some are born with exceptional talent. During my time at Shaolin, I encountered a disciple who was no less than Lin Dong, Shan Xu patiently explained. Shan Xu, do you think I have a chance to reach that level? Young master, your talent is decent. As long as you're willing to work hard, you'll surely make it. But by the time I reach their level, how much farther would they have advanced? This time, Shan Xu didn't answer, for he didn't know how to. People differed from one another, some were born with starting points that others could never reach in their lifetime. Some were endowed with extraordinary talent, easily reaching great heights with minimal effort. Some lacked such innate gifts, no matter how hard they tried, they only lingered in place. Thus, he didn't know how to answer Qin Zhang's question. Qin Zhang possessed some talent, but there was still a gap between him and those true geniuses, Xin Young Master, I know this Lin Dong. 
Joe Wiley, who was driving, spoke up. Oh? You know him? Xin Zheng inquired. Yes. He's a student at our Jiangnan University. A student at Jiangnan University? Yes. Zhou Huili then shared some rumors about Lin Dong and showed Qin Zhang some photos stored on his phone. So, he deliberately keeps a low profile at school. Qin Zhang remarked. Seems like it. Zhou Huili replied. Interesting, interesting. Despite possessing such formidable strength, he chooses to remain discreet. Even when his girlfriend is snatched away, he remains unfazed. What kind of person is he? Lin Dong escorted Xiao Pujuan to the first hospital. Although it was nighttime, the hospital's leaders were waiting for them, presumably notified in advance by Lu Chen. After undergoing a full-body examination, Xiao Pujuan was found to have no major issues, just some internal injuries requiring rest Lin Dong arranged for Xiao Pujuan to be admitted to the hospital, not far from his mother's ward. This way, Xiao Pujuan could visit his mother anytime. Originally, he could have stayed close to his mother's room, but Xiao Pujuan was afraid his mother would worry upon learning of his injuries, so he chose to stay a bit farther away. Broken army, you should focus on recuperating well. When you're free, spend time with your mother. Don't dwell on anything else. Once you and your mother are discharged, settle down in Jiangcheng. I'll make all the arrangements for you. Lin Dong spoke in the hospital room where Xiao Pujuan was staying. Thank you, young master. During my hospital stay, I can have my two brothers come to replace me. They've been through many trials abroad with me for years, and their skills are not much inferior to mine. Xiao Pujuan replied. The other two are brothers who have experienced life and death together with him, and Xiao Pujuan also wants to help them initially, the three of them returned together and gave all the money to the families of the brothers who stayed abroad forever. Their lives must not be easy now. Being able to follow a prestigious figure like Lin Dong and continue fighting side by side is naturally the best. Oh? You have such brothers? Quickly call them over, as many as there are, I'll give them the best treatment. Lin Dong quickly asked. With experts like Xiao Pu Juan, the more, the better, anyway, money is not an issue. Among the brothers who went out together, only the three of us came back, and the rest are forever staying abroad. Xiao Pu Juan said in a low voice. Take care. Lin Dong patted Xiao Pujuan's shoulder and said. Young master, I'm fine. Those of us have all come back from the brink of death, what else is there to worry about? That's good. Call them over tomorrow. Yes, young master. When Lin Dong returned to Jiangnan International Manor, it was already 11 o'clock at night after a quick shower, Lin Dong lay down and checked his phone. Many people had sent messages. Sun Si, Lin Dong, when are you free? My parents want to invite you to dinner to thank you. Lin Dong, no need. It's not a big deal. Just as Lin Dong had replied, Sun Si sent another message. Sun Si, it may not be a big deal to you, but it's a big deal to our family. Lin Dong, all right. But I'm busy these days, let's do it next week. Sun Si, okay. I'll wait for your call. After chatting with Sun Si, Lin Dong opened Lu Peng's message. Lu Peng, Dongzi, are you okay? Thank you for today. If it weren't for you, Min Min and I wouldn't know what would have happened. By the way, how did you know I was in Suite 47 of the Splendid Sands? Lin Dong, I'm fine. Didn't you send me a message saying you were in danger in Suite 47 of the Splendid Sands? Lu Peng, I didn't send you any message. Moreover, I didn't know you were hiding so deeply. Based on your previous performance, wouldn't calling you mean sending you to your death with us? Come on. When are you going to explain to us? Lin Dong was stunned if Lu Peng didn't send the distress message, then who did it using Lu Peng's phone? Then you see what's going on with this? Lin Dong took a screenshot of the message Lu Peng sent him and sent it to him. Lu Peng looked at the time and said, this time should be sent by the classmate of Min Min's class. At that time, I was kicked, and my phone was kicked away. So I have to thank her. Otherwise, the consequences would be unimaginable. Lin Dong, Da Peng, you better comfort Jiang Min. She must have been frightened today. When you have time, let's have a meal together and talk about it another day. Lu Peng, you don't need to say that. Just got into bed. 
Going to take a shower now. Lin Dong, beast. Da Peng, don't envy me, brother. When you bring down Han Shi Yun, you can do it too. Okay, I won't say any more. Min Min is back from her shower. I need to perform twice. I'll thank you properly another day. Lin Dong threw his phone onto the bed and didn't bother replying to anyone else. He was exhausted today, so he would take it easy tomorrow and check the messages slowly. The next day, when Lin Dong woke up, it was already noon. After getting up and washing up, he went to the Golden Leaf Hotel for a meal, then packed some high nutrient food for Xiao Pujuan and his mother, and headed to the first hospital. As Lin Dong was rushing to the hospital, two men in their thirties came to Xiao Pujuan's ward and were chatting with him, Boss, what happened to you? Who could have injured you like this? Exactly. You rarely get such serious injuries even in a firefight. With your physical strength, you should at least rest for a month. What? Do you want to avenge me? Xiao Pu Juan asked. No, you can't even beat him. If we go, it's just courting death. Who the hell said I can't beat him? We're both injured, you know? He's probably lying in bed just like me now. Injured seriously? Then who do you think did it? Where is he? We'll go take care of him. Get lost. By the way, how have you been lately? Xiao Pu Juan asked. Don't mention it. I'm not educated, just full of brute force. It's of no use in our place. I can only work as a laborer at the construction site to make a living. But it's better than being abroad. At least I can sleep peacefully. Same here. The other person replied. If we hadn't taken that last job, all twelve of us would be fine now. Xiao Pujuan's voice was somewhat low boss, this was a unanimous decision among us all. We all wanted to go back home, afford cars, buy houses, and marry wives. It's just that fate hasn't been kind to us brothers. Talking about this made the three of them somewhat silent, it was a sore spot for them. On the eve of returning home, twelve brothers suddenly became nine fewer. Only the three of them came back alive, so after returning, they gave all the money they had earned over the years to those families. After a while, Xiao Pu Juan said, since you're here, don't go back. All your skills will go to waste. Then what can we do? The domestic situation is much stricter than abroad, and all aspects are closely monitored. One of them asked. I am currently following Master Lin in Jiangcheng, where he attends university. My main task is to covertly protect his safety. During my recovery period, you can take over for me. Master Lin also said that when you come, he will give you the highest treatment really? Protecting the employer's safety is our expertise, and the situation in the country is much safer than abroad, so it should be relatively easy. How much can that Master Lin give us per month? I earn 8,000 yuan a month by working at the construction site, and I won't settle for less than that. You're overthinking it. Do you think this is abroad? It's not as tiring as working at a construction site. Surely it'll be a bit less. Another person chimed in. Then it should be at least 5,000. You two have such low standards. Let me tell you, the car master Lin assigned to me is worth millions, and you care about your salary? It should be at least 10,000 to start. Really? Then I won't go back. When can master Lin introduce us to him? How about this afternoon? Master Lin is probably still resting now. I'll give him a call this afternoon. While the three were still chatting, Lin Dong walked in Master Lin, why are you here? Xiao Pujuan hurriedly tried to get up, but Lin Dong stopped him. Pujuan, rest well. I brought you some food. Are these the brothers you mentioned? Master Lin, let me introduce these two to you. Xiao Pujuan introduced the two brothers who had returned from abroad with him to Lin Dong. One slightly taller one is named Yu Guabing. One shorter one is named Wei Yong. Neither of them looked particularly muscular, but every move they made exuded strength. This is the embodiment of explosive power. Those bodybuilders you see on TV may look muscular, but their strength may not be that great. Pu Juan, you rest first. I'll take them out for a meal as a welcome. Lin Dong said. Master Lin, we can handle it ourselves, you don't need to bother. Yu Guobing said. Since you're here, just listen to me. 
You two go with Master Lin. Xiao Pujuan also said. Lin Dong drove a Mercedes Benz G Class with the two of them to the Splendid Sands. Then he let them drive the G Class, while he drove a Bugatti Veyron ahead last night. Xiao Pujuan was injured and couldn't drive, so he left the Bugatti Veyron here. In the Mercedes Benz, Wei Yong drove the car steadily behind Lin Dong's car. For mercenaries like them who had worked abroad for many years, driving was the most basic skill. Not to mention cars, they could even drive tanks. Guo Bing, it seems like the boss has found the right person this time. Master Lin is definitely a wealthy man. His car is probably worth tens of millions, and he treats people well too. He even personally brought food for the boss. Wei Yong, who was driving, said. Yeah. We must perform well and not embarrass the boss. Yu Guobing replied. Of course. Lin Dong led the two to the Golden Leaf Hotel. Yu Guobing and Wei Yong were somewhat shocked by the luxurious decoration of the hotel. Although they had been abroad for many years, they had only been in war-torn countries, and there was no way they could have such a nice place. Um, Master Lin, we can just find a random place to eat, there's no need to find such a nice place. It's okay, this place is mine. In the future, when you're free, you can eat and stay here three times a day. I'll cover all expenses. Lin Dong said. Master Lin owns this place? We'll eat and stay here in the future? The two looked a bit dazed at the eight-star hotel in front of them. After a meal, both of them felt a bit unsatisfied. They had never eaten such delicious food in all their years. The first half of their lives had been really rough. In the evening, Lu Chen called Lin Dong and asked him to go to the Splendid Sands. When Lin Dong arrived, he saw Blackie and Chen Liuji kneeling in the private room. After seeing Lin Dong, they kept kowtowing to him. Master Lin, I was wrong, please spare me this time. I won't dare to do it again. Bang bang bang. The two kept kowtowing, their heads bleeding brother Lin, I'll leave these two to you to deal with. You can do whatever you want, and I'll take care of the aftermath. Lu Chen stood up and said to Lin Dong. After saying that, he left the room. Lin Dong looked at the two without saying a word. This is the change brought by strength. If he were still an ordinary university student, what would be the outcome for Lu Peng and his girlfriend? Lin Dong called Lu Peng and Zhang Min over. Zhang Min's first reaction was still a bit scared. Lu Peng went straight to Blackie and gave him a beating. The whole room was filled with Blackie's screams. He was really suffocating, watching his girlfriend being bullied by others. If Lin Dong hadn't arrived, he would have been traumatized for life. Finally, Blackie was beaten with multiple fractures and sent to the hospital before Lu Peng stopped. Chen Liuji was left untouched. Although he was Blackie's backer, he was not directly involved in this matter when he left, Xiao Pujuan would take care of him. The May Day holiday ended like this. On the first day of school, Lin Dong walked in the campus of Jiang University. Wow! Isn't that the piano prince Lin Dong? If he sings Boy to Me Alone, I'll be his girlfriend. Give it up. Lin Dong's admirer will never be someone like you. What if he likes someone like me? He definitely likes someone like me. Lin Dong glanced at the two who had just spoken and couldn't help but shiver involuntarily. One weighing 180 pounds. One with a face full of acne. Lin Dong quickly increased his pace and headed for the classroom. Along the way, there were many discussions about him, but most of them were of the same level as those just now. The girls in this school really can't be compared to those in the media university, they're several levels behind. Upon returning to the classroom, the majority of the students were already seated observing Lin Dong, his classmates cast curious glances, tinged with a hint of peculiarity. Undoubtedly, Lin Dong's performance at the May Day Evening Gala was simply stunning. Not only did he compose and sing his own songs, but he also played the accompanying music himself. The pivotal point was that his songs were remarkably melodious. Glancing at his classmates, Lin Dong's gaze fell upon Su Ingshu, offering him a slight relief. Finally, encountering someone less intimidating. Taking his seat, the morning swiftly passed by. In the afternoon, during the elective classes, Lin Dong was dragged by Lu Pang and a few roommates to the indoor basketball court. Previously, Lin Dong had been frequently dragged along, quite enjoying basketball. The cheers of his classmates on the court were delightful to hear. 
Of course, the most significant aspect was his fantasy that Jiang Shan enjoyed watching him play. However, this was merely a figment of his imagination despite his height nearing six feet, Lin Dong's physique was too frail, lacking in strength. He would easily be pushed back several steps with even a slight shove, compounded by his lack of time to practice his skills. However, that was then, now Lin Dong's physique had reached its limit. Standing there, it was doubtful if anyone could displace him. The four of them began organizing themselves into teams on the court, two against two. Lu Peng paired with Lin Dong, while Zhou Wenemo teamed up with Fan Biao. Lu Peng was a member of the school's basketball team, albeit as the nth substitute, still beyond the league of ordinary players. Hence, he could only play alongside Lin Dong, who was deemed less skilled. Lin Dong was mainly responsible for serving the ball. After a while, it became apparent that it was essentially Lu Peng versus the other three. In the midst of their fervent game, Huang Junlang arrived with a few others. Due to the limited number of indoor basketball courts, everyone was eager to claim the space although there were plenty of outdoor courts, the scorching sun dissuaded anyone from venturing out in the afternoon. Typically, if someone occupied the court, others wouldn't intervene or would play together if permitted, otherwise, they'd have to leave. However, in schools, there were always a few prominent figures, whenever they appeared, others would yield their place. For instance, the student union president and the epitome of male charm, Zhou Huili, would never encounter resistance. Huang Junlang didn't quite reach that level yet. Lin Dong stood outside the three-point line, serving the ball, when one of the newcomers loudly asked, Huang, rumor has it that you got Jiang Shan pregnant. Is it true? Huang sighed in response, indeed. Who else but her would be so careless to get pregnant after just a few times? Sigh. It's unbelievable. Huang Junlang, what are your intentions regarding this matter? Are you planning to marry her? Marry? Nonsense. What can I do? I'll offer her a substantial sum to terminate the pregnancy. What else can be done? Impressive, Huang Lindong has been with Jiang Shan for so long without any results, yet she got pregnant after just a few days with you. Let me be frank with you all, Jiang Shan was still a fledgling when she was with me. I have no interest in picking up someone else's discarded shoes. What? She was still a fledgling? Is Lin Dong incapable? How would I know? But I suppose so. Laughter erupted among them. Huang Junlang's loud conversation attracted the attention of some nearby individuals, reminiscent of Lin Dong's recent episode of vomiting blood and fainting. Meanwhile, Jiang Shan and Zhu Yan were approaching from a distance, overhearing their conversation. Jiang Shan's face turned pale, tears welling up in her eyes. Lin Dong turned to glance at Huang Junlang's group. Naturally, Huang Junlang stared back defiantly Lu Peng's group also approached. Huang Junlang, I care not about your words, but if you mention my name again today, I'll make you kneel out of here. Do you believe me? Lin Dong said calmly, his anger palpable. Huang Junlang's comment about Jiang Shan was her own choice. However, openly declaring Lin Dong's incompetence in front of so many was intolerable. It was a matter of respecting others, why was that so difficult to comprehend? Huang Junlang was about to speak when he noticed Jiang Shan's pale face and teary eyes fixed on him. Huang Junlang, are you even human? How much has Shan Shan suffered for you? Yet, you dare speak ill of her in front of others? Xu Yan said angrily. At this moment, Huang Junlang felt somewhat embarrassed. He had previously caused Lin Dong to vomit blood and faint in the grove. Seeing Lin Dong here, he wanted to provoke him again, hoping for a similar outcome, but with so many spectators this time, the effect would be even more potent Lin Dong dared to walk with Han Shiryun, preparing to face his retaliation, but he hadn't expected Jiang Shan to be behind them. Huang Junlang, why do you treat me like this? What did you say when we were together? Promising eternity, marriage after graduation, and now, just a few days? Jiang Shan sobbed. Huang Junlang was now in a dilemma. However, apologizing to Jiang Shan in front of so many people was simply impossible for him. How could he maintain his status in Jiang University in the future? Thus, he forced himself to say, Jiang Shan, I'm tired of you. All you want is money, right? Well, how much do you want? I'll give it to you. Maintaining his dignity in front of so many was imperative. He could always spend more money afterward to buy Jiang Shan some clothes or bags to appease her. 
Jiang Shan didn't expect Huang Junlang to say such things in front of so many people for a moment, she didn't know how to respond, tears streaming down her face as she turned and ran away. Huang Junlang, you're nothing but a beast! Zhu Yan exclaimed before rushing after Jiang Shan. Jiang Shan and Zhu Yan left, but the atmosphere remained somewhat arrogant and domineering. On Lin Dong's side were four individuals, while Huang Junlang's side consisted of five, one of whom was the starting center of the school's basketball team, a towering figure standing at nearly two meters tall, weighing at least 250 pounds. Superficially, it appeared that Lin Dong's side was at a disadvantage. The onlookers kept goading both parties, proving that bystanders were not averse to chaos. However, a brawl on the university campus was a significant matter, already crossing Jiang University's bottom line. Except for Lin Dong, who seemed indifferent, no one dared to touch this red line. Even a wealthy second generation like Huang Junlang didn't dare, if he were expelled from school, not only would his financial support be cut off, but his father might also break his legs thus, the two sides remained deadlocked. At this moment, someone suggested a 3v3 basketball bullfight match as the best way to resolve the conflict on the court. Huang Junlang immediately agreed, as it suited his intentions. On Lin Dong's side, only Lu Peng was somewhat capable, being a substitute for the school team. The other two were of average skill level, and Lin Dong, needless to say, was considered negligible. On the other hand, they had a starting center from the school team, and the difference between a starter and a substitute was like night and day. Moreover, his own strength was not inferior to Lu Peng's. Therefore, he was confident of winning. Lin Dong, what do you say? Dare to join? If you're a man, don't chicken out. If you're too scared, we can go three against four with your lot, Huang Junlang said arrogantly to Lin Dong Dongzi, don't fall for it. He's just trying to provoke you. With big gorilla there, we stand no chance. Lu Peng quietly advised Lin Dong. Although Lu Peng didn't consider himself one to easily admit defeat, facing the school team's starting center, big gorilla Yang Shu, he had no choice but to back down. They were both members of the school team and often practiced together, so he knew Yang Shu's strength too well. Playing half-court bullfight made him virtually invincible, although he might not last the entire game due to his massive build and limited stamina. Seeing Lu Peng advising Lin Dong, Huang Junlang directly addressed him, Lu Peng, stop muttering over there, you spineless wimp. Huang Junlang, if you're so capable, then why don't you keep Yang Shu out? Let's have a match, Lu Peng retorted, keep Yang Shu out? Then I might as well not use my hands against you. A coward is a coward. Get lost if you don't have the guts. Lu Peng was about to retort when Lin Dong spoke up. Fine. Let's have a match. Dongzi. Lu Peng wanted to say something but was interrupted by Lin Dong. It's fine, Big Peng. Just do your best. All right. The rules are simple. It's a 3v3 bullfight. The first team to score 10 points wins. Three pointers count as two points. Any objections? None. Oh, by the way, are you going with three or four players? Huang Junlang asked teasingly. Three. You chose it yourself. Don't blame us for bullying you. The news of Lin Dong and Huang Junlang preparing for a 3v3 bullfight spread quickly among some busybodies. Losing not only meant shouting I'm a wimp three times in the Jiang University broadcast room but also hosting a compensatory feast at the Golden Leaf Hotel this bet was undeniably substantial. It wasn't just about losing face but also bleeding money, hosting a table at the Golden Leaf Hotel would cost tens of thousands at least. Soon, more students gathered in the Jiang University gymnasium, with some even skipping classes to join the excitement. Lin Dong's classmates naturally came to watch, some to cheer for him and others to witness his humiliation. Wow! Isn't that Han Shiryun, one of the three goddesses? Didn't expect her to come too. You didn't know? I heard Han Shiryun and Lin Dong are an item. Impossible. Why not? I saw them leaving the school together with my own eyes. Wasn't Huang Junlang always chasing after Han Shiryun? Didn't expect Lin Dong to beat into it. No wonder they look like they're at each other's throats as soon as they meet. I heard it was Huang Junlang who snatched Lin Dong's girlfriend, Zhang Shan, and Lin Dong retaliated by winning over Huang Junlang's dream girl dam, that's impressive. Look! Isn't that Su Shu? Another person exclaimed. Oh my god, really? 
Now, Jiang University's three goddesses are here except for Shang Wan Mingyue. Do you think she'll come? Probably not. Shang Wan Mingyue isn't one for crowds. On the court, both sides were ready. Lin Dong's team consisted of Lu Pang, Fan Biao, and Zhou Wenhua. Lin Dong didn't join initially, wanting to see how they would fare. On Huang Junlang's side were Huang Junlang, big gorilla Yang Shu, and one of Huang Junlang's lackeys. The referee was another member of the school team. With the sound of the referee's whistle, the match began. The first to start was Lu Pang. Skillfully dribbling the ball, Lu Ping maneuvered his body, the basketball weaving between his legs. Facing him was Huang Junlang. With a burst of speed, Lu Ping dribbled to the right at lightning speed. Huang Junlang hastened to catch up, blocking Lu Ping's path. Subsequently, with a sudden halt, Lu Ping switched to dribbling with his left hand and swiftly dashed to the left. Huang Junlang failed to keep pace, allowing Lu Ping to penetrate into the restricted area. Just as Lu Pang leaped over Huang Junlang to approach the restricted area, preparing to send the basketball into the basket, a towering figure loomed before him. The colossal Yang Shu directly leaped in front of Lu Pang. With his height and leaping ability, any attempt by Lu Pang to shoot would unquestionably be blocked. Quick-witted, Lu Pang passed the ball to Fan Biao in the open side position while airborne. Fan Biao received the ball, uncontested, and effortlessly made a layup, sending the basketball smoothly into the net. Lin Dong's team, one, Huang Junlang's team. Thunderous applause erupted at the scene. Well played. Beautiful. However, Huang Junlang's countenance darkened the second round began. Huang Junlang faced off against Lu Pang with the ball. A series of flashy dribbles elicited screams from the audience, yet all his attempts to break through were thwarted by Lu Pang. Stepping in, Huang Junlang directly launched a mid-range shot against Lu Pang. Clang. The basketball struck the rim and bounced upward. Just as everyone prepared to grab the rebound, a hand directly pressed the ball into the basket as it rebounded. The prowess of Yang Shu, the starting center of the school team, was truly formidable. A thunderous dunk ensued. Incredible. Go, Yang Shu. Dunk another one. Various exclamations filled the arena. Lin Dong's team, one, Huang Junlang's team, one. Next, Yang Shu learned from the first encounter, no longer swayed by Lu Pang. He mostly remained in the restricted area and refrained from jumping easily. Now, Lu Pang's trio found themselves at a loss, unable to enter the restricted area at all they could only resort to outside shooting. However, their shooting was abysmal today. Despite multiple attempts, none of them went in. With Yang Shu guarding the restricted area, Huang Junlang could shoot with impunity, despite his low shooting percentage. Whether on offensive or defensive rebounds, they were basically all taken by Yang Shu alone. Thus, Huang Junlang felt no pressure in shooting. Soon, the score reached 2 to 8. Lin Dong's team had only scored 2 points while Huang Junlang's team had already scored 8. Just 2 more baskets, and he would win. At this point, Lin Dong had to take to the court. If he didn't, Huang Junlang might end the game with a 3 pointer. Lin Dong signaled for a timeout. During the timeout, Lu Peng's trio returned to the rest area. My apologies, Dongzi. Our shooting is off today, many of our outside shots aren't going in, Lu Peng expressed apologetically. We're not doing any better. Fan Biao and Zhou Wenhua added it's alright. I'll take responsibility for this. Just do your best. I'll go in first, and whoever feels tired can rest first, Lin Dong said. I'll rest, Zhou Wenhua offered. All right, Wenhua, you rest first. The timeout ended. Lin Dong led Lu Peng and Fan Biao onto the court. Wow, substitution? Isn't that the guy from the May Day Gala? Lin Dong, right? Can he even play basketball? What basketball? He's a joke, completely useless, Ding Wei loudly responded. Ever since the May Day Gala, Ding Wei had been disapproving of Lin Dong. A nobody in the class, he suddenly became this piano prince. It should have been him and suing Xu Wen in the limelight, but instead, Lin Dong stole the show. Ding Wei's remarks displeased many classmates. Ding Wei, if you're not going to cheer for your classmates, fine, but don't pour cold water on us here. You're still the class monitor. Exactly. You're just envious and jealous. 
Lin Dong is way more talented than you. Not only does he write lyrics and compose music, but he also plays and sings his own songs. What can you compare to him? Several girls in the class retorted at Ding Wei. Now Lin Dong was the idol of many female classmates. They hadn't noticed before, but since the May Day Gala, they found Lin Dong increasingly handsome and charismatic. In Jiangde University, Lin Dong had a considerable number of fans. Su Inxue also stared at Lin Dong as he entered the court, curious about what else he could do. Han Shiryun also looked at Lin Dong, her eyes affectionate. Huang Junlang watched as Lin Dong came on. Lin Dong, don't forget tomorrow at noon, I'll be eagerly awaiting your self-assessment. We haven't even finished yet. Who knows whose self-assessment anyone will listen to? What's this? Do you think you still have a chance to win? Do you think you can turn the tide as soon as you come on? Aren't you overestimating yourself, Lin Useless Dong? Huang Junlang mocked we'll see after the game. All right, let's start. Lin Dong didn't argue back. He usually preferred to let his skills do the talking, all the talk didn't matter much. The more he talked, the more painful the slap in the face would be. The game continued. The ball was in Lin Dong's possession. Standing beyond the three-point line, Lin Dong passed the ball to Lu Peng, then gestured for him to pass it back. Lu Peng was about to dribble, but seeing Lin Dong's signal, he thought for a moment and passed the ball back to Lin Dong. Lin Dong received the ball, raised it with his right hand above his head. Facing him was Huang Junlang's lackey, clearly underestimating Lin Dong. Hundreds of people in the audience stared intently at Lin Dong, waiting to see how he would attack. Suddenly, Lin Dong pushed the ball directly with his right hand. What the hell? Is he even playing? He's shooting already? This was what everyone was thinking, including the players on the court, who had already rushed to the basket to grab the rebound. However, three seconds later, everyone was stunned. Only to see the basketball hollowly sink into the net. Lin Dong's team, 4, Huang Junlang's team, 8. It went in. Can you believe it? Damn, was that luck? Although many doubted, the fact remained that it went in. Go, Lin Dong. Lin Dong, so handsome. Another one. Some of Lin Dong's fans began to cheer for him. On to the next ball. Huang Junlang held the ball. Lin Dong actively moved up to defend, while Lu Peng ran to the restricted area to face off against the giant Yang Shu. Lin Dong, just because you scored one lucky shot doesn't mean you can change the outcome let me show you what real basketball is, Huang Junlang said as he began to display his flashy dribbling skills, executing various extravagant moves. Lin Dong remained nonchalantly standing in front of Huang Junlang, without assuming a defensive stance. Lin Dong, do you think you're provoking me? I'll show you the consequences, Huang Junlang suddenly accelerated past Lin Dong's right side, with no reaction from Lin Dong. Huang Junlang was delighted as he arrived at the restricted area, preparing to lay the ball up. Ha! Huh? Where's the ball? Where's my ball? Turning around, Huang Junlang saw Lin Dong standing outside the three-point line, holding the ball in his right hand, and once again pushing it with the same gesture as before. Another hollow swish. Lin Dong's team, 6, Huang Junlang's team, 8. The first time might have been luck. But what about the second time? The whole arena erupted. Damn, what a skilled player. How did he steal that ball just now? Did anyone see it clearly? I didn't see it. It felt like Huang Junlang's ball was just stolen in the blink of an eye was his speed too fast? Who said Lin Dong couldn't play basketball just now? This guy is definitely skilled. With a darkened face, Huang Junlang continued to hold the ball. This time, he didn't say a word, nor did he perform as many flashy dribbles. He steadied himself, made a couple of moves, prepared to receive the ball, then pass it to the giant for a strong inside play. However, before he could retrieve the ball, he felt a gust of wind and suddenly found his hands empty. The ball was stolen again. After stealing Huang Junlang's ball, Lin Dong crossed the three-point line, turned around, and casually threw the ball. Another hollow swish. Lin Dong's team, 8, Huang Junlang's team, 8. At this moment, the entire arena fell silent. Everyone was shocked. Three consecutive three-pointers, all hollow swishes. This wasn't luck anymore Lin Dong was definitely a skilled player who was hiding his true abilities. 
Huang Junlang called for a timeout. He had no choice. If Lin Dong made another three-pointer, he would be finished. They needed to discuss how to limit Lin Dong. Huang Junlang called for a timeout. Currently discussing how to limit Lin Dong. In Lin Dong's team's resting area. Well done, Donzi. You've been hiding your skills too well. Yeah, when we were playing together, you didn't take it seriously at all. Look down on us? Lu Pang and others joked with Lin Dong. They hadn't expected Lin Dong to be so good. Although Lu Pang knew there was something mysterious about Lin Dong's identity, he didn't expect him to be so good at basketball. No way. Guys. It's mainly because I've had a breakthrough recently. Lin Dong said with a wry smile. How do you explain that? Are you saying you got some super awesome system? Can you learn whatever you want directly? Do you believe it? Han Shiryun sat in the audience, watching Lin Dong rest, and was about to hand him the water she had, only to find that several girls had already gone to give Lin Dong water she could only sit there, puffing her cheeks angrily. Lin Dong, you're so handsome. Have some water. Drink mine. Drink mine. Before Lin Dong could react, someone handed him another bottle. Lin Dong, I admire you so much. Can you write a song for me too? I've even thought of the name, girl. Several girls surrounded Lin Dong. While on Huang Junlang's side, there were only a few guys, and not even one offering water. Although Huang Junlang was wealthy, he had a bad reputation. Arrogant and a playboy. Seeing Lin Dong being so popular, Huang Junlang felt uncomfortable. He quickly led his two teammates onto the court, signaling the referee to continue the game. The game continued Huang Junlang stood outside the three-point line to inbound the ball. The giant Yang Shu didn't stick to the basket anymore, he came out to receive Huang Junlang's pass. Then, crouching down, dribbling with his right hand, he prepared to push straight to the basket. With his height and weight, once he reached the basket, it was practically guaranteed. Lu Peng was pushed step by step by Yang Shu towards the basket. He had no way out, his physical qualities and strength were far inferior. He could only resist desperately, but it was useless, and he was soon pushed to the basket by Yang Shu. Yang Shu forcefully jumped up, grabbed the ball with his right hand, and directly dunked towards the basket. Is he going to dunk over Lu Peng? Good shot! Huang Jun Lang shouted. This shot was definitely secure. In terms of dominance under the basket, throughout Jiangda University, Yang Shu, the giant gorilla, was undoubtedly top-notch. Just as Yang Shu was preparing to slam the basketball into the basket, a figure suddenly appeared in front of him, slapping the basketball in his hand snap. The basketball was slapped away. The sudden appearance was naturally Lin Dong. He had been paying attention to Yang Shu's movements all along, just waiting for this last moment to block. The starting center of Jiangda University's team, nicknamed Giant Gorilla, Yang Shu, was actually blocked? This made anyone who knew a bit about basketball on the scene lose their calm. Except for those who were just there for fun, they didn't understand basketball, nor did they understand what it meant for Yang Shu's dunk to be blocked. Exclamations resounded as Yang Shu's powerful dunk was unexpectedly blocked by Lin Dong? Am I hallucinating? Incredible! Unbelievable! This is the mighty gorilla, Yang Shu, nearly 2 meters tall, yet Lin Dong, standing at just 1 meter 80, managed to block him. Countless discussions echoed throughout the entire arena Lin Dong's recent consecutive three-pointers didn't astonish people this much, at most, they just provoked some excitement among the onlookers. But this block truly astonished everyone. Daring to confront Yang Shu head-on and successfully blocking him, Lin Dong is indeed remarkable. Now, cheers erupted loudly. Lin Dong, keep it up. Lin Dong, I adore you. Various cries echoed one after another. Huang Junlang felt extremely uncomfortable, as if he had eaten something foul. Yang Shu, still standing dazed on the ground, has yet to recover to be blocked like this? Even in the campus of Jiang University? Not to mention Jiang University, even when representing the school in matches against other universities, he has never been blocked under the basket like this. This is simply a disgrace to his basketball career. Yang Shu looked at Lin Dong standing in front of him, almost a head shorter and uttered his first words upon arriving on the court. Lin Dong, you, impressive. However, it was evident that this statement was uttered with boundless anger. 
Lin Dong shrugged and replied, you're not bad yourself. Then he ran to the three-point line to receive the ball. Leaving Yang Xu with a fluctuating expression. As the basketball flew out of bounds, it happened to land not far from Fan Biao. Lin Dong took the ball passed by Fan Biao. Huang Junlang immediately came up, tightly guarding Lin Dong, not giving him any chance to shoot. Lin Dong swayed left and right, but Huang Junlang remained tightly on him actually, Lin Dong could shoot directly, Huang Junlang's close defense didn't pose much of an obstacle to him. But he felt that winning like this wasn't exciting enough, not impactful enough. Just a dunk, right? I can do that too. Lin Dong passed the ball to Lu Pang, then swiftly maneuvered past Huang Junlang. Lu Pang then passed the ball back to Lin Dong. With Huang Junlang no longer blocking his path, Lin Dong dribbled straight into the paint. Damn, what's Lin Dong up to? Isn't his three-point shot deadly accurate? Another three-pointer and he'd win, so why charge into the paint? Who knows? Maybe he wants to dunk too. Joking. Yang Shu is still in the paint. Who could dunk over him? Just now, Yang Shu was blocked by Lin Dong. What's impossible about this? That was just an accident. The discussions from the audience didn't affect Lin Dong. They saw him charging into the paint, then, like an eagle, he soared high, holding the ball with his right hand above his head, preparing for a powerful dunk this is going to be a tomahawk dunk. Everyone in the arena was transfixed on Lin Dong. Yang Shu watched as Lin Dong leaped directly towards him, intending to dunk over him. How could he fulfill Lin Dong's wish? Just being blocked by Lin Dong once already embarrassed him, and now allowing Lin Dong to dunk over him like this, would he still have any dignity as John University's top center? As Lin Dong leaped for the dunk, Yang Shu jumped straight up from his position, just as he did when Lin Dong blocked him earlier, slapping towards the basketball in Lin Dong's hand. Snap! The basketball didn't fly out like before. Instead, both hands sandwiched the basketball in midair. This scene was captured by many with their phones. It was truly a showdown. Lin Dong looked at Yang Shu blocking his way. He didn't actually exert much force, otherwise, even 10 Yang Shu's wouldn't be enough to stop him he added a bit of force with his right hand holding the ball. Yang Shu began to struggle. With the ball in his right hand and Yang Shu's hand sandwiched in between, Lin Dong headed towards the basket. Bang! The basketball slammed into the hoop fiercely. As Yang Shu's hand was about to touch the basket, he retracted it. He realized that with his strength, he couldn't stop Lin Dong's dunk this time. If he didn't pull back his hand, with Lin Dong's force, his hand would surely fracture upon hitting the basket. He hadn't expected Lin Dong's strength to be so great. At this moment, Lin Dong's body also made contact with his. Yang Shu felt a tremendous force, causing his body to involuntarily fly backward, and after landing, he struggled to stand before falling to the ground. Lin Dong landed steadily. The entire arena was stunned.